Our SURF presentation was titled, Effects of Music Therapy on Infant Stress in the Neonatal Intensive Care Unit. I am Maddie Murray, and alongside me is Ali Machado and Hannah Mitchell. Our research PICO question was, in the neonatal intensive care unit, how does the use of music therapy compared to no use of music therapy affect the neonate stress levels? We decided to research this topic due to the fact that we are all interested in working with pediatric or newborn patients in the future, and we are always wanting to find the most effective way to provide optimum care for our present as well as our future patients. The Neonatal Intensive Care Unit, NICU, is defined as a unit of hospital that is equipped to care for preterm newborns or dangerously ill infants. These infants are often referred to as neonates, which include the first 28 days of life outside the womb. For this review, the terms neonate and infant will be used interchangeably. Many neonates admitted to the NICU are either preterm, have a low birth weight, or suffer from a health condition that requires special care. A preterm infant, according to the Centers for Disease Control, is a baby born before 37 weeks of pregnancy has been completed. Low birth weight includes infants weighing 5.5 pounds or less. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, approximately 85% of low birth weight infants and 4% of normal weight infants are hospitalized within the NICU. During hospitalization, the neonate may undergo up to 70 procedures daily. These procedures may include initiating intravenous catheters, blood draws, stress tests, feeding tube placement, and surgical procedures. These procedures may cause for immense stress on the infant, resulting in decreased healing time and extensive stays in the NICU. The environment may also consist of bright lighting, loud noises, and noxious smells that may be overwhelming for the newborns. In addition to the negative stimuli created by the hospital environment and various interventions, neonates are also deprived of positive stimuli. Developmentally supportive actions such as skin-to-skin -skin contact, breastfeeding, positive touch experiences, or interaction with the parents may be more difficult to accomplish within the NICU setting. The impact requiring NICU care goes beyond the patients themselves, as it may also be a financial burden to their families. The cost may vary depending on the length of the stay and can best be reduced by improving patient outcomes that in turn accelerate the recovery. The first few months of life are a crucial time for brain development in infants. During this period, neuronal plasticity, neuronal pruning, and brain growth are occurring at a high rate. Weber and Harrison 2018 suggests that distressing stimuli in the NICU have a heightened ability to permanently alter infant brain development by augmenting neuronal cell death, reducing brain volume, and impairing brain structure and function. Stress has also been shown to have other physiological effects on patients, such as heart rate, blood pressure, respiration rate, pain perception, and weight gain. Negative effects on these measures may impede the infant's recovering and overall development. All these factors contribute to the well-being of the infant. Therefore, reducing stress early on may improve overall health outcomes. To provide optimal care, health care professionals are continuously investigating new approaches and interventions to reduce stress within the hospital environment. In the NICU, the use of music therapy has become more prevalent as auspicious research shows the potential benefits of its use. Music therapy is the use of intentional sounds of music that can be characterized by their slow tempo, regular rhythm, and low pitches. These relaxing tunes can be soothing to the neonates and allow them to tune out the loud environment around them. Music therapy has been increasingly suggested to reduce overall stress levels as more evidence continues to be published on its effectiveness. In order to conduct our research, we aim to gather data from primarily clinical trials. That way we could get a higher quality of research. Among the publications that we used, Three of them were double-blind clinical trials. One was a single-group randomized cl clinical trial. Another was a crossover interventional study. And the last one was a triangulation study that used both qualitative and quantitative research to gather information. Because we were looking at stress levels of the neonate, we found research that measured physiological effects of stress. 
So things such as heart rate, oxygen saturation, respiration rate, weight gain, pain levels, and blood pressure. Because all of these can be altered by the amount of stress on the body, it was a good way to get definitive data. Because these are typically measured numerically, which provides objective data to be able to compare. Some of the pain scales that were used were the neonatal infant pain scale, the premature infant pain profile, and the neonatal facial coding system. All of these are commonly used in the NICU and, again, just provide that numerical measurement of the infant's pain level. This is important because with infants, we are not able to get any verbal indication of what inf- interventions are helping and which ones are not. Some of the studies would divide the subjects into two groups and have one group listen to relaxing music during procedures and the other group would have silence during the procedures. And then they would compare the results of the two groups. Others would use the same group of infants and have them listen to music during the procedure and then have them not during their next procedure and then would again compare those physiological parameters to determine which was truly less stressful for the infant. The studies varied um, in the kind of music therapy they would use. Some would play just straight instrumental music while others would actually record the mother singing a lullaby and would play that for the infants. But all of them used um, music that was played at low decibels and was kind of a softer tune to provide a more relaxing stimulation. Although they were each a little different, researchers found similar results. And after performing a systematic review of these trials, we were able to determine the overall effectiveness of music The results of our research were ultimately deemed inconclusive. This was due to the lack of statistical significance and the need for further research on the effects of music therapy in the NICU. The studies did suggest, however, that improvements may be found in measures such as vital signs like respiratory rate, temperature, blood pressure, heart rate, and oxygen saturation. Another vital thing for newborns in the NICU is weight gain. It was seen that with music therapy, the infants gained more weight than those who did not receive the music therapy. In Article 6, pain was shown to have increased with music therapy in comparison to the control group. Article 2 suggested that music therapy decreased the severity of pain in their experimental sample. The overall results seem to be ambiguous as some studies showed definitive improvement in music therapy groups, while other results were inconsequential. Although the music therapy groups saw improvement in comparison to the control groups in one or more of these areas, many of the results lacked statistical significance with p-values greater than 0.05. This suggests that the relationship between stress reduction as measured in physiological improvement and music therapy may not have a direct relationship. That being said, studies suggest that there is some value to music therapy. Based on this information, more research is needed to determine what the true benefit of music therapy on infants in the NICU setting may be. Doing more research on this topic can potentially provide a non-pharmacologic comfort measure that increases the speed of recovery for patients. Nurse researchers could utilize this information to perform new studies that expand to different populations and medical specialties. The results from past and future studies could provide education topics for other healthcare professionals, patients, families, and the general public. It is important to note that music therapy can not only be implemented in the NICU, but in regular hospital rooms during births, during cesarean sections, and it can be continued by the infant's parents at home after discharge from the hospital. Nursing staff who utilize music therapy in the NICU can educate other nurses, physicians, parents, and families about the positive physiological effects on infants. Not only can the use of music therapy in the NICU have a positive effect on the infant, it can also have positive lasting effects on parents as well. Despite the results of this review being inconclusive, there is still supporting evidence that music therapy has positive physiological effects on infants in the NICU. 
Using the knowledge provided by this review, nurses can continue to educate patients, families, physicians, and other healthcare professionals on the benefits of implementing music therapy. Overall, my group and I thoroughly enjoyed the research process of this review and hope to see music therapy utilized more often in NICUs, labor and delivery wings, and other specialties throughout healthcare.